These stairs are the most prominent remains of what was once a leading enterprise in Queensland. That they were at various times almost covered by floodwaters will give a hint to some of the trials faced during that time and to the reason that this area has not become part of the large scale subdivision and development nearby. In 1839, George Raff arrived in Australia from Morayshire, Scotland, and from 1851, as a merchant in Brisbane, he traded wool to London. As a strong campaigner for separation from New South Wales, which was achieved in 1859, he became part of the first Queensland Parliament. From 1860 onwards, he began to develop a farm on the Caboolture River, which during his ownership would grow cattle, cotton and sugarcane, the latter leading to a state-of-the-art rum distillery, which at its peak produced 85,000 litres of rum in one year. It became the largest sugarcane plantation in Queensland, with the largest private tramway in the southern hemisphere, used to haul cane from fields to the sugar mill and to a wharf on the Caboolture River. Wagons were initially horse-drawn until steam power was introduced, again at first on a Queensland cane farm. The Riverside Wharf became a hub for other stations and settlement in the district, as river transport was more efficient than the land transport available then. During the 1860s, a number of South Sea Islanders began to work on the station amongst more than 60,000 mostly males who were brought to work in Queensland. Although there were good reports of his treatment of these workers, known as Kanakas, the system is now regarded as little better than slavery. Housed in barracks, supposedly on a three-year contract, it is likely many were kidnapped or conned, but they contributed greatly to the development of Queensland rural industry. Later, with the adoption of the White Australia policy, many were haphazardly deported. At its peak, Moray Field Station included the main house, eight cottages, a schoolhouse, butchers, carpenters and blacksmith shops, stables, stockyards, sawmill, the sugar mill, distillery and bond stores, as well as the wharf and associated storage. A lonely headstone records the demise of Levi Walker, who drowned in the Caboolture River within six weeks of his arrival from Scotland. In the mid-1880s, sugarcane was no longer grown and the distillery closed. After Rath's death in 1889, the farm became neglected until most of the assets and machinery were sold off in 1901. During the 1900s, various owners ran cattle, including at one stage the largest dairy herd on the north coast, with up to 250 cattle being milked twice a day by hand. As was common at the time, without refrigeration, cream was separated from the milk and delivered to the Caboolture Butter Factory, with the skim milk being fed to their pigs. Farming ceased in the 1970s, and the area became a private pine plantation with the introduced radiata pine. The native bunya pines are a reminder of the pre-European inhabitants who used to journey through here to hinterland festivals, feasting on bunya nuts and conducting their intertribal business. The homestead succumbed to white hands and all that remains of European endeavours are a few ruins thankfully being preserved by the developers of the nearby subdivision.